This lesson is over the characteristics of stars and the life cycle of stars. When most people look into the night sky, all the stars look alike. During ancient times, people often identified stars based on patterns or shapes in the night sky. Many times, the shapes were named and stories created about why they exist. These groups of stars or constellations are still refer referenced today. However, today's astronomers identify stars based on characteristics such as chemical composition, size, temperature, color, and brightness. Spectral analysis allows scientists to study a star's chemical composition. Hydrogen and helium are the most common elements found in stars. As a star ages, it contains less hydrogen and helium and a larger variety of different elements. Stars range greatly in size from unbelievably large supergiants to very small dwarfs. An important difference between these two extreme sizes of stars is their density. The matter that makes up a dwarf star is packed so tightly together that one spoonful weighs several tons. In contrast, the particles of matter in a giant star are so spread apart that the density of the star may be less than the density of air in our atmosphere. Our star, the Sun, is considered to be average in comparison to the size of other stars. Color and temperature. Have you ever noticed how the coils of an electric toaster or electric heater glow red when they are hot? Just as color reveals clues about the temperature of the coils, color also reveals clues about the temperature of a star. When viewed through a telescope, stars have different colors ranging from reds, oranges, and yellows to blues and whites. Red stars are the coolest of the stars, and then we go from to orange and yellow, yellow-white, blue-white, and then blue is the hottest of the stars. Our star, the sun, is a yellow in color, which places it in the average category of temperatures of stars. The brightness of a star depends on its size, temperature, and distance from the observer. For example, when you observe the coil in an electric toaster, the coil becomes brighter as it becomes hotter. When you turn off the toaster, the coil dims and eventually stops glowing. The brightness of a star is also related to its temperature. The hotter the star is, the brighter its color. In general, blue and white stars are the brightest and hottest stars, while red stars are the dimmest and the coolest. However, there are exceptions to this generalization. For example, some red supergiants are very bright because of their enormous size. Our star, the sun, is of average brightness. However, the sun appears brighter than any other object in the sky. The sun looks brighter simply because it is so much closer to Earth than other stars. Another name for brightness is magnitude. There are two types of magnitude that astronomers use when describing stars. Absolute magnitude and apparent magnitude. Absolute magnitude depends upon a star's size and temperature. The absolute magnitude is a measurement that takes the distance of the star into account. Apparent magnitude is how bright a star looks or appears when viewed from Earth. The sun's absolute magnitude is average. However, its apparent magnitude is overwhelmingly larger than any other star. When measuring the magnitude of a star, the lower the magnitude number, the brighter the star. For example, Betelgeuse has an absolute magnitude of negative 5.2 compared to the sun's magnitude of 4.8. Betelgeuse is much, much brighter than the sun. 
To an observer on earth, the sun seems brighter than Polaris because it's closer to the earth. However, Polaris is 10,000 times brighter and 100 times larger than the sun. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or the HR diagram, is an important and useful tool for studying the nature of stars. Astronomers plot a star's temperature and brightness, or magnitude. Astronomers Elnar Hertzsprung and Henry Norris Russell found that the plotted stars fall into one of four groups. The main sequence stars, the giants, the supergiants, and the white dwarfs. Most stars fall into a narrow band on the chart called the main sequence. This, in this band, temperature is related to brightness. The hotter the star, the brighter it is. A second group, called the giants, and the last group, called supergiants, appear at the upper right of the chart. Here, size rather than temperature determines the brightness of a star. The brightest stars are the largest stars. A third group of stars appears at the very bottom of the chart and, is called, and are called white dwarfs. These stars are very dim, but hot. Again, size rather than temperature dictates the brightness of a star. Even though these stars are very hot, they are very dim because they are very small. The HR diagram helps scientists determine a star's approximate life cycle stage based on its location on the diagram. Young or middle-aged stars are located along the main sequence. However, as a star ages, it falls off the main sequence and moves to the upper right portion of the diagram. At the end of an average star's life, it will end as a white dwarf, which is located at the far bottom left. The life cycle of a star depends on the size or mass of the star. All stars begin in a nebula. A nebula, a cloud of gas or dust. Let's then take a star like the Sun, which is an average star. The Sun, after it was formed, it became a protostar, and when it became massive enough due to gravitational pull of matter that was clumping together, when it got large enough and hot enough, then nuclear fusion began. Nuclear fusion changing hydrogen into helium. And it is became an average star. The sun is considered a yellow dwarf star, which is an average size star. After about the sun, well, the sun, for example, will last for about 8 to 10 billion years as an average star, but eventually it will begin to use up all its hydrogen and as the hydrogen is gone and is replaced by helium, the sun will begin to expand and it will expand into a red giant and it will reach out to about where the earth is. This stage will not last but for uh, millions of years. Eventually, the helium will be used up, helium being uh, fused into carbon. And as the helium is used up, the planet will begin to collapse in on itself, creating a stellar nebula. This is throwing the matter of the sun out into the, into the uh, surrounding space. And as it does that, what we will have left is a ball of carbon, a white dwarf, very hot, but very small. The white dwarf will be probably around the size of the Earth. If we take a star much longer, larger than the Sun, a very massive star, it goes through basically the same stages until the end, but a massive star is much larger than the Sun, quite often much hotter than the Sun. When it uses all its hydrogen up, it also 
begins to expand, and it expands much, much larger into a red supergiant star. As the helium is used up from this in this red supergiant, it creates not a planetary nebula, but a supernova. As the star collapses, it collapses very violently, throwing matter out into the universe, into the space surrounding it in very violent reaction or creation of a very large and new nebula. And that's what will happen with the supernova. At the core of the star, though, there's so much gravitational pull that two things might happen, depending on the original size. One, and more common, the star will continue to collapse until it reaches the size of, say, uh, a city. And this will be a neutron star. Neutron stars are uh, very small, very hot, and are spinning very rapidly. If the star is even more massive, then the collapse of that star will continue. It, the gravitational pull is so great that it doesn't stop at the neutron star, but it continues its collapse indefinitely, and it collapses and collapses until there is basically nothing there. And the gravitational pull is so great that not even light can escape, and this is known as a black hole. So to conclude, we have talked in this video about the characteristics of stars, including chemical composition, the size, color, and temperature of stars, the brightness of stars. We've also talked about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which is a very important tool to scientists. And we have talked about the life cycle of stars, including stars like the sun and stars that are much, much larger than the sun.